Today is Saturday, October 17th, 2020, and today I'm thinking about the air, the sky, the heavens. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2. Wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Prince of the power of the air. So this is referring to Satan. Satan is the prince of the power of the air. There is power in the air. And think about how all major media, going back to the radio, has been involved with power in the air. And how today it's worse than ever before. You can't go anywhere without being bombarded by Wi-Fi signals, by the cell phone towers, 5G, and there is power in the air. And not just power in the air that humans are broadcasting, there is an ether, if that's what you want to call it. There is just power running through the air. And it's something that we know and that they teach us about even, but they get us to just completely ignore it. And it's just one of those things that's hidden knowledge, that's truth in plain sight. But since they don't flat out tell everybody about it, it's like almost nobody knows about it just because they didn't tell it to you straight in school. Well, so what I want to show is from a children's book, All Kinds of Weather. And I think that this is just a good example of how they, the people in control, there's a bunch of people around you that know the secret. And one of the things that they love to do is, or, you know, the truth. The truth is a secret these days. That's what it is. these people, they're guarding the truth for themselves. And they don't want anybody else to know the truth. But what they'll do is, is they'll hint at the truth. In they play the game in all the ways that they like to play the game. Laughing and, and making jokes about the truth and hiding little clues, little Easter eggs here and there to just brag about knowing the truth. But then also in cases like this, they like to give ample opportunity for those in the know to show their children the truth. So let's say that if somebody is, is Illuminati and they're reading their child this book and they know that they're going to illuminate one of their children, because it doesn't seem like they always illuminate all their children, but anyways, they give them plenty of opportunity to talk to them about the truth. And I'm going to show you an example of that. First though, look at this symbol for science that they give. That is the Star of David right there, which is probably not the Star of David, probably the Star of Rephaim or whatever it is in the Bible. Anyways, we're not supposed to like symbolism like that. That's strange, occult. Just think of how, when you think of a seance, you think of satanic people drawing different runes and things on the ground. That's what all this symbology is about. Where did Jesus tell us that we're supposed to have all these different signs and symbols for things? It is occult. Okay, so this is the page that I wanted to show. This was the page on storms. The weather is stormy. I can see lightning. I stay inside because it is safe. What do you like to do? And notice how even the way that they framed this picture, it's like they, they want you to notice what's going on over here. But do you see the little subtle clue here? Remember, this video is about power in the air, at least the first half of this video. And that's why they chose to put power lines right here. It gives an opportunity for those in the know to go, ha ha ha, look, they're, they, they went out of their way, because this is clearly a photoshopped image, they went out of their way to make sure that they selected an image where the power lines are front and center. It's like the only thing on this left page is those power lines and the electricity. Because that's what power lines do. Power lines collect and all these different little boxy units, I don't know exactly what they do, but some of it has to do with storing the power. Power lines are what gives us power, not power plants. Power plants are Disneyland. I think power plants are one of those things that everybody has instinct about them that, hey, something's not right. People just know, like, hey, why, why don't power plants have just the most ginormous wires or, you know power lines why don't why don't they have these super thick wires coming out of the power plant that slowly gets smaller and smaller as you get get down the line and they tell us weird things about voltage oh they crank the voltage up or whatever but 
we just know that doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense to produce a bunch of power really far away and then ship that power enormous dis distances. No, what makes sense is to generate power locally. And that's how it works. All power is generated locally through these power lines. They collect power in the power lines. Have you ever noticed how sometimes when you're driving past industrial areas, they'll triple up on these power lines. You'll see like three lines of power lines all next to one another. Or you'll see just immense power lines that seem to be going through the middle of nowhere. You see just these cleared out areas in a forest and these power lines just going on and on for miles and miles. It's like, what is the purpose of that? And it's because they're collecting power. That's what the power lines do. The power grid itself is what collects the power. And then it's just stored locally and distributed locally. And just notice, I just thought this was really obvious about how they're hiding that truth in plain sight. Somebody went out of their way when they photoshopped this image to select this on purpose because they like to give those opportunities for those in the know to point it out to their children. Hey, look at this. See the power line? That's where all, all our electricity comes from. But it's a secret. Most people don't know that. And also, they look at just the... <laughs> The body on that thing on the right. Man. So that's the first half of this video. There is power in the air. And power lines is how we get power. And the second thing I want to talk about is because I keep bringing this up. The sky is getting lower and lower. I say the firmament is coming down. The sky is falling. Literally. And I saw this on that community on Reddit. Retconned. It seems to be one of the few places that people are talking about this type of thing. I'll just read this. Uh, I was writing game glitch post, but for some reason it was deleted three times instantly. Maybe I used forbidden word, blah, blah, blah. Several people here have already said clouds and skylines are too low compared to old reality. So the major problem with this place and most places is they are stuck in that NASA outer space fantasy land box and you see that people love this idea of alternate reality. Oh, timeline shift. And it's because they have no original ideas and all they can do is regurgitate what the media tells them. So they watch a bunch of Rick and Morty and they think that you can time travel and go through dimensions and shift your... All that stuff, to me, it just comes off as so... Like, all these people are megalomaniacs. Why do you think that you're the only individual and you're shifting through timelines? And no, we're all stuck on this ride together. <laughs> we are all stuck in here together. Anyways, I'm not going to read all of this thing. Clouds are too low. One night the moon was so low it looked like you could touch it. There's something really weird going on with the sky, sun, and moon. And the stars. See, this person is corroborating what I said about the stars. It seems like we only see the brightest stars now, and that the background stars, you need a pair of binoculars to see them. I don't know if it has something to do with the, the same phenomenon of the sky being lower, or if it's something else just from all the spraying. The skies are looking compressed. Where I live is renowned for its big skies. And I've even noticed on my photography that there's a lot less sky depth on my landscapes than there used to be. Clouds seem low, and the moon seems close enough to pluck out of the sky. It's never as high as I remember it used to be. Yeah, it seems like the sun and the moon don't get as high in the sky as they used to be. And I guess we'll see. Winter is coming up, so if you live in the north, the moon should be getting higher and higher in the sky. But I think that it'll stay pretty low. It won't get as high as it used to. Maybe. We'll see. And yeah, I, I love pointing that out, though, that the very simple fact that most people don't know, in the summer, the, high, the sun is high in the sky and the moon is low. In the winter, the moon is high in the sky and the sun is low. And the sun is hot and the moon is cold. But they won't tell you these simple things in school. They will never tell you those simple things in school. And also in school, they'll show you endless diagrams of of NASA outer space cartoon stuff, but they never just show you the simple truths or just have you go outside and observe these things for yourself. Because anybody observing these things for themselves, they're not going to come to the same NASA conclusions. The only reason people believe that stuff is because they were told it. Anyways. 
I've linked this here before, a rather suspicious article that seems designed to conveniently explain such, such observations away. Yes, they love to do this. They love to take these things like, you know how the moon is getting brighter? And you know how in the past few years, they've been calling out the special names for all these moons. And I believe that the names for these moons have always existed, but only in, only recently have they been calling all these moons by these strange names and by running articles of it all the time. Oh, Super Blood Wolf Moon is coming up. I, I think that Wolf Moon has probably always been an idea that people have talked about because there's always been people into occult things and watching the moon and especially witches and which are totally real. That's It's not a fake thing. You're surrounded by... People will openly tell you that they're witches these days, and they are obsessed with the moon and the moon cycles. And so I, I'm pretty sure that these things have always existed, but it's just the media constantly brings it up now so that people are like, oh, oh, that's the reason why the moon is so incredibly bright and red looking, because it's a strawberry moon or whatever. But anyways, Earth's clouds are shrink are sinking and could help cool the planet. There's no such thing as the planet. Pop science. Did I already mention earlier how pop, prince of power, prince of power of the air. I believe that it's called pop music because prince of power. Popsci.com. And there's another one too. The This one, the undulation of wave clouds. There is no such thing as natural. It just looks like electrical interference wave patterns in the sky these days and it's because they're using those 5g towers to make fake clouds in the sky i mean they're real clouds but it's just they they're not naturally created look at this person's name at man be very suspicious of anybody who goes out of their way to talk man boy girl anybody who feels the need to constantly reinforce their gender yeah and they're 233 on their username but look at how this agent, at man, 233, yeah, right. Uh, they start talking about Avatar, Matrix stuff. I hate that stuff when people are so stuck in NASA outer space land. But it becomes clear when you start to see the coding. When you get the coding, you'll see that the people pushing this type of thing are related to one another through the Orange 33 Club. The evil pack rat. You're surrounded by these people. There's no more real horizon anymore. When I was teaching myself how to draw, there was about an inch of haze between the land and the sky. This is just an interesting optics thing. A lot of people don't know about how the horizon works and how there's fuzzing at the horizon. And that's the solution to what they tell you, the ship going over the curve. No, no, no. It's just simple properties of how optics works and how the horizon line works there's a fuzzing near the horizon and this pay this person's saying that the fuzzing is getting different so i don't know about that but i thought i would i would bring it up i agree i've noticed that the clouds drop lower for two years now and i know several people who agree with me and see the same So there are some, uh, could this be from the wildfires? Uh, apparently this person says the lowering trend of clouds in this world. See, these people are so obsessed with this concept of, oh, we switched timelines, guys. They've just watched way too many sci-fi films or they're part of the club and they have to push this fantasy on people. But anyways, I guess NASA even talked about it from the Terra satellite. And notice how this is even a truth in plain sight. Terra means Earth. Terra satellite. It's like an oxymoron, a contradiction. And there is no such thing as satellites. They do have weather balloons up there, but nobody can get past the firmament. And so this is kind of a truth in plain sight. Terra satellite. Terra means Earth, ground. A lot of the stuff that they tell you is satellite-based is really ground-based. And like GPS, it's just ground-based triangulation using ground towers. I think that's mostly it. Let me know what you think in the comments. I just wanted to show that there are a lot of people out there that notice that the sky is lower. The sky is falling. It really is. And maybe it has something to do with the sky is lowering before it opens up. 
if the sky opened up when it was at its regular height, maybe maybe when the stars fell, it just would have been total destruction. But maybe God is lowering the sky before he opens it up so that things go according to plan. I don't know exactly what's going on. Let me know what you think. God bless everyone.